a local financial institution assisting in promoting the small business sector. 12 Haitian migrants nabbed on Grand Key and a mother making a plea to the Grand Bahama community. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Wolf-Barkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping the news, it is widely accepted that small business drives the economy. And with that in mind, there is a constant refrain for more business to Bahamians rather to invest in small and medium enterprises and own a piece of the economy. Tonight, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama is commending a local financial institution for its role in helping to promote the development of the small business business sector. Megan Shepard has our top story. The Scotiabank Senator the Honorable Kwesi uh, Thompson uh, commending Scotiabank for taking the initiative to help give small and medium-sized businesses the information and assistance they need to start businesses and succeed in business. He notes, however, that one issue he has heard from the business community is concern regarding receiving funding. Startup funding is uh, also critical as well as those businesses who wish to expand, um, providing the necessary funding for them is also important. And so we're pleased that uh, Scotiabank is going to be working along with the Small Business Development Center, uh, which is, has a focus, and, and the government put it in place, so that uh, small businesses will be able to have access to funding, uh, but not just funding, but they'll have access to mentorship, they'll have access to training, uh, have access to persons who will be able to hold their hand uh, and move their businesses forward. The minister also commended business owners on this island for their perseverance in these tough times. One thing we all recognize is that uh, we know that doing business in Grand Bahama uh, is not always uh, easy, is not always ideal. Uh, for many years now, we've uh, been facing a number of challenges. But there is one thing that uh, we recognize is that there is a uh, perseverance. Uh, there is a stickability. There is a strength. There is a, uh, an, a, a positive uh, feeling within the small business community in Grand Bahama. He also gave an update on the two major developments in the pipeline for Grand Bahama namely the Carnival Cruise Port and the recently signed letter of intent for the sale of the Grand Lucayan Resort. And with both of those developments, uh, negotiations, uh, it is a, both are very uh, difficult, very uh, detailed uh, developments, and so the negotiations uh, are continuing, but the negotiations are progressing, uh, we believe, very well. Uh, and so we are very optimistic about those two developments coming on stream. And we believe that uh, local businesses, I've said this uh, message before, that local businesses should begin to prepare themselves for uh, those developments and what opportunities those developments will bring. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. Thanks, Megan. And other news forecasters continuing to monitor a broad area of low pressure located several hundred miles southeast of the Lesser Antilles. The chance for development has dropped to 40 percent over the next five days, but there is still the possibility it could form into a depression. In the meantime, the Grand Bahama Port Authority's Geographical Information Systems Department is doing its part to spread the message of preparedness. Jamila Mizik picks up the story. The Grand Bahama Port Authority Geographical Information Systems Department, partnering with the National Emergency Management Agency to give realistic scenarios of how flooding can impact low-lying areas in Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama Port Authority GIS Department Manager Troy McIntosh says they're hoping that by informing and educating residents of potential hazards, persons would be sensitized to those hazards and heed to NEMA's calls to evacuate various communities hoping that a visual um, uh, is able to provide uh, more in-depth as to the critical nature of storms and surges. Uh, as you, you know, the saying goes, um, picture paints a thousand words. And so we, we hope by showing the picture in various low-lying areas, persons will be encouraged to evacuate those areas once NEMA gives the 
the go ahead that they need to leave those areas. McIntosh says GIS is a powerful tool they have also been able to use in other ways. We have mapped uh, most of our infrastructure from drainage to signage, uh, our roadways, just to know where everything uh, is located. And so if a resident called, for example, to say my drain um, in my particular street is, for whatever reason, not working, uh, we were able to pull that up on the map to see where it is, the last time it's been serviced, and any history on that particular drain as well. He says they've also found a convenient way to help persons locate the hurricane shelters closest to them. It's called the Here We Go app. Once you have that app, again, go to the shelters link, um, bit.ly forward slash 2019 shelters. You'll see the list of shelters. Become familiar with which one is closest to you. Once you click on it, it also gives you additional information with that shelter, where it's located, contact numbers. If you wanted to call to make sure it's not full, they can um, receive you. You can do that in advance. And so once you do that um, and you're on the page with the shelter, you can basically look at which one is closest to you and select that particular one. Copy it over to the Here We Go, and you're on your way. Jamila Mizik, ZNS Network News. Grand Bahama Power is still uncovering incidents of alleged electricity theft in residential and business actors and confirmed reports say the latest incidents report, reportedly occurring within the past month. Now you may recall that the whole issue came to light earlier this year when according to GB Power officials an audit uncovered that some customers were either connected directly to their system via a meter bypass or the meters were tampered with to underread the actual usage resulting in a loss of revenue for the power company. That audit also resulted in a number of stores and other entities being disconnected from the grid. Two men were arraigned before the court in connection with those cases earlier this year. Well, after a recent meeting with religious leaders here on Grand Bahama, Regarding the legislation of marijuana in the country, co-chair of Bahamas National Commission on Marijuana, Bishop Simeon Hall, applauding the intelligent conversation, calling it a respectful dialogue. Bishop Hall is one of those in favor of the cannabis being used for medicinal purposes. He maintains that though, though that more research can be done before decriminalizing and or regulating the herb. Bahamians are dying because they do not have the financial readiness uh, to pay for their uh, getting well. You shouldn't die in 21st century because you can't afford it. Why should the rich live longer simply because they have money? I think the society as a whole should take and look at this and if People could grow this in their backyard, and I don't mean to be comical, but if people could grow this in their backyard, then it should be regulated. Bishop Hall adding that one main point in discussions is whether or not the popular plant would lower the war on drugs in the country if it is decriminalized. Much of the murders, much, many of the killings is done because someone uh, encroaches on my drug turf. What if it were legalized? Then would that mean uh, that we could control it better? We don't know. Research is, is now being done as to whether that is valid or not. Immigration officers nabbing 12 Haitian migrants over on Grand Key. The 10 males and two females were all taken into custody after being found to be in breach of the Immigration Act, including overstaying, illegal landing, and working without a work permit. With the assistance of the RBDF, officers of the Immigration Department transported the Haitian nationals to Freeport to further process and to face charges. And coming up, scores of young people taking a stroll down memory lane. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, covering Seabreeze, Sandy Point, and your part of the Bahamas. 